Hey yo, baby D, get your little ass over here on the mic, man. Show these other little niggas they can't fuck with the dangerous crew, man. Spit that shit. She in a rose gold chain, gold glasses, prime time like Dion. <laughs> Hey, can't do the corn, do the Dion. You hear me? He don't speak on me, I don't compete with a peon. Fly in a bundle like my name was Dion. Starting today, the Hines County Sheriff's Office is lowering the age requirement for its detention officers from 21 to 18. 18 is the minimum age requirement to hold the position under the Mississippi Peace Officer standards. Now, applicants still have to pass a background check and a drug test, and they have to have a high school diploma or GED, and have no prior felony convictions or serious misdemeanor convictions. The Hines County Sheriff's Office is currently trying to hire multiple detention officers. There may be a concern about an 18 year old working in corrections, but of course, if you look at Mississippi Department of Corrections, they're actually hiring at the age of 18 as well. So it's not just having an 18 year old working in corrections. You need to be a responsible 18 year old as well. Well, the starting salary for the position is about $35,000 a year. Chef Tyree Jones says he's hopeful they can fill these vacancies by hiring responsible 18, 19 and 20 year old workers. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, man. We off to work, man. Just pulled up to work. We're waiting to get called in for a load, so we just chilling in the car. I figured, hey, why not make a quick little video? And uh I don't know. Just talk about something. Be productive all the time. You know what I'm saying? Do something to help somebody. Give a little game. Give a little wisdom. You know, you always can be helping somebody. So last night we uh we was chilling. You know, right before I got ready to shut it down for work this morning. And we seen a a, a story come across the YouTube feed on the channel. And it was saying that uh, Hines County and Jackson, they're about to lower the uh, the age that you have to be to become a correctional or the, a detention officer at the Hines County Raymond Jail. Uh, this jail has had a history of... Um, lack of um, sufficient employees to be able to run the jail. Um, they had a history of, of being called out about the conditioning of the jail. People are saying it's deplorable. Um, they had a contraband issue where people were at one point throwing a lot of drugs over the fence and getting caught. I had family members get caught up in some stuff like that, trying to introduce contraband. Um, they've had a few situations where inmates were found deceased inside their cells. Um, apparently, it wasn't always um, homicide. Sometimes it was just natural causes. So I won't put that black eye on them for, you know, killing people. But, you know, um, yeah, maybe they just in need of detention officers, man, and now they're going to drop their requirements and give younger people an opportunity to step into the field and see what they can do with the opportunity. I don't see anything wrong with that, but I will give you uh, some pros and cons of that situation. Now, if you're a responsible 18-year-old and you can handle yourself and you're, you're, you got strong self-will and you got a strong mind, and you're not tempted to do wrong things, it could be a great opportunity for you. I'm going to tell you why. Let's say, they say you're making $39,000, $40,000 when you uh, become an entry-level detention officer from what they say on the, on the, on the news story. Uh, that's what, $750,000 a month? I mean, a week? Potentially, I ain't do the math. I'm just going to throw a number out there. I'm going to show you how you can break it down and make it work for yourself as an 18-year-old. So let's just say you're making $1,000 a week. Uh, after taxes, you might get $750. 750 times 2, that's what, $1,500 every two weeks. $1,500 times 2 is $3,000 a month. You're, you're 18 year old straight out of high school. Now, $3,000 a month is what you got to play with. 
let's just say you don't have any kids, you didn't get pregnant while you was in high school, you did good. Now you got $3,000 of money to play with to be able to, you know, do what you will. So you take $1,000 of that money if you want to leave your parents' house, get out on your own, start doing your own thing. Um, you could take $1,000 out of that 3000 and put towards your apartment rent every month. That leave you with 2000 Let's say you don't have a dependable car. You could take $400 of that, that last 2000 that you have and put towards you a car note every month. So now you're at, a, what, $1,600 that you have left over? So with that 600 out of that 1600 you can take and put towards your utilities like your light bill, your water bill, your cable, your uh, cell phone. You could buy you some clothes. You could buy you some groceries every month. That's six hundred dollars. So now you have a thousand dollars out of that three thousand left over. If you work that job for a good year, that's twelve thousand dollars that you could save. And you balling right now because you got a new car, you got a new apartment, your house is. You know what I'm saying? Fully stocked with food. You got clothes. Everything. Your bills is paid. Cell phone is paid. All that. You don't even need a roommate in there with you. And you still got $1,000 left over every month. So $1,000 left over every month times 12. Because you're going to save that same $1,000 after your bills. 12 months out of one year. That's $12,000 that you have saved. If you do that for two years, that's $24,000 saved off of working for two years and maintaining those same bills. Two years ain't a long time. You feel me? All you doing is waking up going to work for two years and you can save you $24,000 as an 18-year-old. This is before you turn 21. Now imagine if you had to went to college. That first year, you might have got a $12,000 debt from, from student loan. But with this here, this plan here, you ain't got no student loan overhead time you graduate school and you making money straight out of... uh out of high school. So you got this $24,000. Now you can do a few things with this. You can keep on working that job and stack it. Then next year you'll be at $36,000 saving that same old $1,000 every 12 months. Now you got $36,000. You do it another year, that's $48,000. You do it one more year, you know what I'm saying? You can keep doing that and you can save your money and you can retire from that. Or you can take that $24,000 that you save in two years turn around go in the secretary of state office for mississippi and find some of those houses where people don't be doing their taxes don't pay their taxes on it you could buy you one of them houses for about five thousand dollars turn around put five more thousand into it off of that twenty four thousand now you at nineteen thousand but when you turn around and sell that mug sell it for thirty sell it for thirty thousand now you done went from nineteen thousand dollars and investing in a house Man, let me see. Let me do that math. You had 24. You spent five. That left you 19. You spent another five. That's what, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14? 14,000. Now you're down to 14,000, but you made a 30 ball off of flipping that house. So now you got what? $44,000? After two years of working, 44,000, man. You didn't turn that 24 in the $44,000 as a 20 year old all cause you worked two years as a correctional officer man so now you got that $44,000 you can turn around and buy you another house you can buy you a, a, a barber shop you can put down on a, a house a mortgage man you can open up you a, a boutique you can open up a beauty salon you can open up a nail shop you can go and uh if you're a guy and you like to buy cars, you could take and buy you a Monte Carlo SS for 5500 Turn around and put some money into the motor. Turn around and sell that mug for $15,000, 20000 You know what I'm saying? It's so much that you can do all off of two years of working as a correctional officer. So don't let nobody tell you that being a correctional officer, oh, you police. You police, man. Man, fuck that. I'd rather you go and buy, be a correctional officer and live a legit life than going out and being a criminal and then going and working for five dollars a week in the pen for somebody and have to worry about getting killed you know what i'm saying and your mama then worried about you because they can't come see you all the time as if you had your apartment down the street from working as a correctional officer 
You know what I'm saying, man? Like, don't let nobody trick you into being a criminal, man, where you can start out fresh out of high school as an 18-year-old and get into something legit. It's many ways to make money out here, bro. You just have to close your ears and don't worry about what people going to say about you, man. Don't be no stripper now. I ain't saying that. No stripper, you know what I'm saying? No crazy stuff. Keep your ears open for that type of stuff. And read the Bible about, you know, what you need to be doing. Be an honest person, man. Work for your money. Not that that ain't work. It's somewhat work. But you get what I'm saying, man. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, man, uh, I think that's a good opportunity for uh, for people, man. 18 years old. It'll probably give some people the opportunity to not have to do crazy things just because they don't meet the age requirements for certain jobs. So that's cool, man. I respect that, Mr. Tyree. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool, brother. Uh, now, I'm going to give you the adult side of being a correctional officer, too, now, a detention officer, because I, I had a, a history of going through training to be a correctional officer. I'm going I'm to give you a quick story time. All right, so the year is about 2009. Because I graduated high school in 06. So I was about what? I was about 21. And if you from the Jackson area, you heard of um, CMCF, Central Mississippi Correctional Facility. It's in Pearl. Yeah, it's in Pearl. Yep. Um, so I'm going to tell you how it came to be that I got applied for this job. So the year is 09. I'm out of high school, man. I'm, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to be a little little thug and i'ma sell my little weed you know what i'm saying and i'm just gonna be a little drug boy and i'm in barbering school at the time uh right down terry road uh academy of hair um right by jackson state if you're from the jackson area you know what i'm talking about so you know i'm just in that phase man i'm in that phase uh i'm feeling myself Trapper died, Chicken Talk, T.I. and came out, all this old crazy stuff, man. So, you know, I'm riding Tudo Cutlass, Broham, Sunroof, Push Button Sunroof and that thing, 350 Vortec, you know what I'm saying? Uh, rag Top, Blue on Blue, White Walls, Hub Caps, man, my uncle put that thing together for me. I got an uncle that got a shop on Capitol Street. All he do is do these type of people cars. You feel me? So he did that on the love for me, for the five bands. So uh, he got me riding good, man. I'm thinking I'm going to be a little, you know. So my mom and grandma, they have family that's from uh, the Iowa area. So they they go to this uh, church that's off of McClure Road. It's called New Kenny Creek. It's in Jackson. And it was pastored by my good friend and a person that I started a barbershop with, Mr. Ernest Slaughter. He passed away during COVID. You can fact check all this, man. So um, at Mr. Slaughter's church were two brothers named Alan and Alvin, I think. But whatever it was, they were COs, sergeant, lieutenant, whatever they was out there at the prison. And they had passed word to people in the church that the prison was hiring for correctional officers. I guess my people knowing, man, this dude, he'll need a job. You know, he, he can really do something with this correctional officer stuff. I hear they make good money. So it, the word passed through my ears. And I always been about some money. I don't care what it's about. If you offer me an opportunity to get some money and this some stuff I ain't got to sell my soul for, I'm down. So they run it by me. So I go out there and apply for the job. Now, mind you, around this time, I'm 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 really rocking with Lil Wayne hard. He's dreaded up with the ripped jeans. Y'all know I love ripped jeans. He just got the whole look down pack, just popping his shit. You know what I'm saying? Carter two, Carter one album. So uh, he used to always scream that money over bitches. M O B. Now I'm tatted. I done went and got tatted on my arms. I got M.O.B. right here, 24-7 on this side. 
I am tatted all around my neck and my arms and stuff, man. So, uh, yeah, so I'm not knowing that MOB was some fucking gang lingo back then. You feel me? I'm thinking the shit stand for money over bitches. Yeah, I'm all for that, nigga. Yeah. It's up. I'm, I'm on the money tip. You feel me? Yeah, I ain't starting no woman. I'm trying to get my money, bruh. That's how we was living back then, man. They had us so brainwashed, bro. So, uh, I go and apply for the job. I get the job. Pass my drug screening. Uh, go through the, the training process of um, doing the physical part of it. Because you, you got to run around the whole complex to make sure that your agility and your stamina is good. And you're going to be able to pass the health. You know, in case some stuff jump off, they want to know that you're going to be able to hold up for a little while without passing out and dying. So we passed that part. Now we start going into the classroom aspect of it. And they start breaking down the different gangs, the temptation that comes along with the job, how people try to persuade you into smuggling stuff. Uh, blase, blase. Just everything that you got to worry about. Your hours and your money, how much you going to make, your uniform, policy, all this stuff. So they finally get to the part where they showing how to identify gang members. On one of the slides that they show the tattoos and the markings on people's body, why one of these fools got M.O.B. on their body? I said, nigga, that what? Do anybody else see this shit on me? Needless to say, boy, right after that, I, I became so self-conscious that uh, I started noticing that this one particular, he was like a fucking drill sergeant, the way this nigga stayed on everybody. But me in, in particular, he stayed on me a lot. Uh, I think it was because of this tattoo. He was trying to see if he could break me and turn my temperament up to where he could make me quit because he was afraid that I was a gang member trying to infiltrate the prison, maybe smuggle some stuff in, look the other way, get some people knocked off, all this type of stuff. So uh, needless to say, man, he kept picking with me. And around this time, I'm completely PTSD'd out, you know what I'm saying? Fighting in high school and shit with my friends. I ain't trusting nobody. I'm Got the, the logic in my mind, nigga. I'm getting off first. If a nigga talk crazy, we fighting. I done lost a job. Fighting all at my job. A good old job working that Snyder out there in Brandon. Fighting and shit. Because anytime somebody says something to me, I'm ready to go. Fuck you. I ain't got nothing to live for. You know, I ain't going out. You know what I'm saying? Just, wow, man. Little temperament problems and shit, bro. So, um, needless to say, man, this man kept on picking with me, bro. And uh, one day, things just boiled over. Me and him had words, man. And I ended up losing the opportunity to be a correctional officer. But I just said that to say this, man. Uh, while I was in that class, I kept in touch with some of the people that was in it with me. And uh, about a year later, I ran into one of the girls that was in our class. And she told me that one of my real homeboys that I used to rock with in class. When we went to lunch, we used to hang together, walk together when we was going in the classroom, talking and all that, because we was around the same age. She told me my homeboy had got uh, gotten fired. And shit, I don't, I don't remember if she said he got locked up or if he got probation or some type of little, you know, situation like that. But he had actually got persuaded into bringing in a gun, a gun or some drugs from some uh, prisoners that was in there. I don't know if he got bribed or he got threatened into bringing in some stuff, but I said that to say this, man. Along with those pros and the money that I talked about in the beginning, there's also cons, and one of those cons is temptation, bro. So, you know, you got to be a mature individual when you, uh, when you go for a job like that, man, because it's going to be a lot of influence and persuasion to get you to do the wrong thing so you got to have your mind right when you go up in there you got to be responsible and don't get tricked into being a prisoner 
while working at a prison. You feel me? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if God saved me from myself back then. He probably seen that I might have been tempted to do something and just pull me out of it because he know I ain't, I ain't no prison type person, bro. I went to alternative school when I was like 16, and that shit was like hell. You feel me? Like, so prison definitely would have been, man, you feel me? So, uh, yeah, man, but, you know, that's just a little quick story time. I'm going to tell you one more thing, too. Remember when um, Rick Ross had his little picture out there from being a CEO? Yeah, man, uh. It's a lot. It's a lot that goes into that prison stuff, man. And he came out with a little CD later on, and he was saying that uh, he was saying that uh, he got into that prison stuff to help his homeboys out that was a prisoner, you know. So you know, man, don't 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 look down on that, man. Get you some money, man. Don't let nobody influence you to. No, I can't do it because I got to stay true into the street code and all that, man. You could do you could do everything with your, your own way. You know, you ain't got to go in there and be the the low-down prison officer that uh, some people are. You can go in there and be the one that want to help people. You know what I'm saying? Treat, treat the prisoners with respect because any one of us could be in there any day. You feel me? Any one of us, all it takes is one wrong decision, and you could be right in there where they at. So, you know, it's all about how you address it, man. So, uh, if you 18, man, and you want to get into that thing, hey, big salute to you, man, for not being a prisoner, not robbing, not killing, not being on TV for doing some crazy stuff. Get your money, man. Get your money. Uh, Yeah. That's all I got for you. I'm finna chill out. Wait on these folks to call me for a load, man. I'll catch y'all on the next one. You feel me? Subscribe, bro. Subscribe to the channel, man. Pass this uh this wisdom on to somebody, man, that you know, man. I ain't gonna never tell them nothing wrong, man. Subscribe to the channel, man. We'll holler. One.